Okay, uh, good morning, students. Uh, Mr. Eisinger here. Uh, it is currently, uh, it's Friday at 9 o'clock. Uh, in a couple hours, I'm going to take you a fourth hour class out to uh, do the car pushing activity. And uh, I told you on Thursday I was going to be gone for Monday, so I'm going to do a quick little video uh, series here to help you with the calculations I'm going to ask you to do on Monday. And uh, I'll also give you a few other things I'm going to ask you to do uh, in my absence. So I uh, hope you enjoyed the activity on Friday. Uh, it should be sort of fun, but it's good application for how we might apply Newton's second law uh, to measure force by looking at what it causes, which is acceleration. So uh, what I want to do today is just go over uh, four things with you. It's going to be very brief. Uh, the longest uh, portion will be the first part where I show you how to do those calculations on how much force you can muster. And then the other things you can see on this slide uh, to do your own calculations based on data, data that you gathered on Friday that be found at page 42 of your packet, and then uh, have you do some problems on uh, Newton's second law, it's page 41, and then um, uh, because uh, you're going to finish up those activities fairly quickly, uh, I'm going to give you an additional thing to do, a rocket sledder activity, uh, it's not in your packet, it's uh, something the sub will give you, and uh, that should complete today's activities, so good luck with that, and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Let's take a look at uh, page 41 in your, uh, sorry, page 40 in your, uh, in your packet. Uh, where we talk about uh, this kind of problem. And so it looks like this. Uh, it would be the, uh, the one that says, in a strength contest, uh, how much uh, three students push a 1,500 kilogram car from rest at a distance of 12 meters in a time of eight and a half seconds? There's no, there is an opposing force of friction uh, for this problem. Now, uh, I'm certain that uh, when I take you out on Friday, a couple hours from now, uh, we're going to uh, not do any measurements that involve frictional forces acting on the car, but clearly, you, you know that there's friction acting because when you stop pushing on that car, the uh, car very, uh, very slowly but uh, very certainly comes to rest, and that's because we have that opposing force of friction. Uh, in the problem I'm going to do with you today, uh, I'm going to include that force of friction. For you, you're going to exclude that, so it should make the calculations a little simpler. So when we take a look at this in uh, page 40, uh, down the very bottom, number four, in a strength contest, uh, three students push a 1,500 kilogram car from rest a distance of 12 meters in a time of eight and a half seconds. Uh, we have that opposing force of friction, uh, and I'll show you how to do these calculations. Now, I'm going to uh, flip this thing over uh, to uh, this here, so let's see if I can't actually try this one. Three students push a 1,500 kilogram car from rest. I'm going to draw a little picture of that. Um, oftentimes, we're going to draw pictures to represent a problem uh, and be able to create a diagram out of, uh, out, of, uh, out of a story there. So here we have a 1,500 kilogram car. Uh, we have three students pushing for this example, so I'm going to draw three students here. Uh, pushing on the back of that car. Hopefully no one broke any uh, any of the tail lights or back windshields or anything like that. But uh, So we push in this car. We uh, we have three forces that are acting. And uh, we're, we're assuming for this diagram that all three of those forces are the same. It's likely that uh, one or more of you pushed uh, with different forces than the others. But uh, nonetheless, these are uh, force uh, one, maybe force two, force three. So those are from the three persons that are pushing. Uh, now, for this problem, we have an opposing force of friction. I'm going to change that for this one to make it a little bit uh, more straightforward. I'm going to make that be 200 newtons of frictional force. So that would be, uh, let's just call that right, right here. Let's just call that F sub friction, so a little F sub F there. Now, certainly we know that the car has some weight, and so that weight would be calculated as mg. And I took 1,500 kilograms multiplied by, that, uh, multiplied by 10, and I would get about... Uh, 15,000 newtons of weight and of course we know that the ground is also pushing up on that car with a force from the ground and that force should also be 15,000 newtons and that's because those two forces are balanced uh, they produce uh, equilibrium vertically now certainly the car is not in equilibrium horizontally uh, and so the car is going to accelerate according to Newton's second law so Newton's second law is the, is the law that we would use to describe changes in motion due to unbalanced forces very simple law, huge range of application. Uh, anytime the motion of an object changes, it's due to unbalanced forces. This equation here describes how that uh, how that change occurs. Now, in this case here, you might look at that and say, well, I, I know the mass of that car. It's 1,500 kilograms. I have to be able to get the acceleration. Now, I can't get the acceleration directly. I don't have anything up here that tells me the acceleration directly. We have to use our measurements to be able to calculate that acceleration. Now, back in the uh, earlier portions of this unit, we uh, used an equation that looked like this that related the acceleration of an object 
how, uh, how far an object changes position to the acceleration it experienced and the time interval during which that change occurred. So in this case here, we know the 12 meters is how far we moved that car. Uh, we are going to calculate the value for A, and we measured that time to be eight and a half seconds. Now, yeah, your, our goal here is to solve that for A. There's a number of ways to go through algebraically to get to that. Uh, you can do this in your own methods, as long as you don't violate any math rules. But I would maybe start uh, multiplying both sides by 2. And all I'm doing there is to get rid of that half. So that half that turns into a 1. And now I've got 24 meters is equal to, let's see, A times 8.5 squared. I'm going to use a calculator for that. So 8.5 squared is a 72.25. Now, don't forget, the units are also squared on that. So even though I, I write that as second squared, I'm not squaring that number anymore. That number has already been squared, but the units themselves are squared as well. So now I divide both sides by 72.25. And now I've got acceleration to be, my calculator will give me that. I get 0 0.33, and that would be meters per second squared. So the acceleration that these three individuals were able to create on that car is about 0.33 meters per second squared. It means every second that car is changing its velocity by about 0.33 meters per second. And as you push that car, you probably recognize it's going faster and faster and faster. The rate at which it's going faster is that 0.33 meters per second squared. I'm going to take that and plug that in over here to calculate the net force that's acting on that car. Now, 1,500 times a third is about 500 newtons. I want to pause for just a moment and make sure we understand uh, what that net force means. That 500 newtons is the combined forces of those four. So I don't know what F1, F2, or F3 are yet. They're not 500 when I add them together. The total is 500. Now, if I consider that the frictional force, and I have the frictional force up here to be 200, make the number a little bit easier to work with. If you're going to net 500 newtons, but you have friction opposing you of 200 newtons, that should mean that you are, are having to push with 700 newtons of force. And the reason for that is that 200 newtons is sort of take, being taken away uh, due to that friction. So you've netted 500. That means that the three individuals pushed with a total of 700. Okay, so sometimes that's a little bit confusing, but that's the way that net force equation works. So F1 plus F2 plus F3, these three here must add to 700, and that's because that frictional force, again, was taking away the forces that they pushed. So they actually push with 700 newtons. Now, if I want to determine um, what each person pushed with, if I assume all of those are the same, then the force of the push from each student would just be 700 newtons divided by 3. I'm going to use that calculator again for that. And I get that that's about 233 newtons each. Now, most of us would like to, uh, to put that in pounds because we don't know what newtons uh, feels like, uh, but we do know what pounds feels like. So if I divided that by 4.45 newtons per pound, uh, that would give me about 52 pounds each. So for this particular example, the example that I'm solving in your packet, provided you change that number to 200, uh, each person would have pushed with about 52 pounds of force. And so that's how we'd go through and do that calculation. Now for your particular lab, you uh, have the one that uh, looks something like this. And uh, you have your own data, right? You have uh, something with your the mass of your car, you have the distance that you pushed, probably 10 meters, and then you have that time. Now you're excluding friction here. So when you go to solve this problem, uh, you will not include uh, this portion where you where you had to sort of add some additional values there. Okay, so all you're going to get is that number, and so it's not quite as applicable because we do know friction x. We just didn't have a, a means of measuring that. All right, so hopefully that helps you. Now for the uh, the other things I was going to have you look at, um, do your calculations on your own uh, on page 42 of your packet, and uh, and then uh, page 41 are just some uh, like test level questions on Newton's second law. So a little bit more straightforward than I think the car pushing activity. You notice that this particular one here says enrichment only, right? So this is not going to go on your test. It says that complicated equation that we used in our first half of this, uh, of this unit. They're not going to have that on that test. Uh, but uh, the problems on page 41 of your packet uh, where it says Newton's second law problems.
those are certainly test level. And then I'm going to give the uh, sub a uh, rocket sledder activity, just a, a way to sort of fill the uh, fill the gap, because I think you'll be able to finish up these activities fairly quickly, and then uh, do an interactive on the physics classroom. Folks, I uh, look forward to seeing you on Tuesday, and I hope that uh, hope that you enjoyed that carpooling activity. Signing off. We'll see you see you tomorrow.